Hey guys, it's Kaz here and today I'm doing my June wrap up and unfortunately it wasn't the best. So just as an example, in May I think I read 11 books that were either 4 stars, 4.5 or 5 stars and in June I read 2 4 stars and everything else was 3 or 3.5 so very meh average time unfortunately. But let's just get into it, some of them I'm going to moan about. That's what you're here for. So I did start off the month with a bang and I read Bloom and this is one of the ones that I did very much enjoy. This is a graphic novel. Here's the insides. It's got a nice little uh, colour scheme going on. And it's basically about these two boys working in a bakery and it's cute and lovely and the art's really cute and it's just cute and basically it's cute. So how can you not like it? It's just a slice of life. One of the boys family owns the bakery, the other one comes to work there and it's a cute time. Let's say cute again, it's cute. Who knew? Next up I read Sprint Dreams by Faith Dismuk, I do believe if I remember correctly. I got a copy of this from the author via Goodreads, they were posting about it and the synopsis sounded really good. It's basically gay sports contemporary. I mean that is my vibe but unfortunately there was just there was too much the author was trying to put too much in it so basically the synopsis is about Makeda she is a runner and then something's gonna happen and stuff what it doesn't even mention at all even a tiny bit is the fact that the way she figures out her sexuality of being bisexual is a really really toxic unhealthy relationship with her and her running coach and I feel like that should be mentioned in the synopsis. I mean, I didn't have any problem with it, but I feel like a lot of people would want to not read the book if they knew that the main book was about this relationship between somebody and somebody that has authority over them. It's not like um, it's not like a high school. She's in 1920, so it's not really like... Mm. But obviously the power dynamic is there, so it still is wrong. And also the coach is an absolute bitch and extremely gaslighty and extremely horrific the way she treats her but that wasn't even the main problem I had with this book the main problem I had was the author was trying to put too many plot points in there and talk about too many issues and it meant that every single one of them wasn't explained enough for example there was a shooting a guy got killed because of drugs and then it kind of petered out and nothing happened a girl on the running team was pregnant and had to have an abortion and then nothing really happened, they didn't really talk about it. There was this side plot about the campus having really high sexual assault cases from parties and then that kind of just petered out and nothing really happened. It's just, it felt like I was trying to talk about too many distinct topics but not in depth enough to actually help in any way or discuss in any way. Which was unfortunate because if the author just picked one or two of them and actually went in depth and put the effort into doing the before, the middle, the after of that piece of storyline it would have been really good but because there were so many thrown in there it just none of them hit home. It was just unfortunate. What I did enjoy about this is that it was a gay sports contemporary with a black female main character, you don't see that very often who is bisexual, you don't see that very often. So I very much appreciate that. Also the author is a black woman who ran in college, so very much own voices. But the ending as well, like it felt like it was probably slightly realistic the way that it all wrapped up, but also it so was not the way that you would want it to wrap up and the way you would want that this person of a high authority that has been abusing her power to be dealt with so take that as so take that as what you will that's not how you say that sentence but anyway moving on make of that what you will it's not take it's make moving on next up i read we're all made of molecules by susan nielsen this is like a middle grady type thing and it basically follows these two characters stuart and ashley stuart's mum died and his dad is now on his own ashley's dad has come out as gay and moved out of the house and his mum's on their own and then their parents get together and then they move in together. So it's just alternate perspective about these two. Stuart is quite 
well, he's very clever. He's probably on the spectrum. I don't know if it actually says in here or not. I can't remember, but I think he is. And he's kind of naive, but really lovely. And then Ashley is an absolute bitch. She's one of them, you know them Catagill characters where you're just like, why do people write this anymore? Why is this a thing that happens in nowadays literature? Just a bitch, loves fashion, she doesn't even like her friends. Like, her constant personality is, oh, I'm better than my friends, oh, I'm prettier than my friends, oh, I'm, my clothes are better than my friends. And it's just like, really? And then she's got a lot of, uh, a lot of negative feelings about the fact that her dad is gay and she doesn't want to tell any of her friends. Which would have been nice if it was just... It didn't feel like a feeling, like she felt strange about it she was just like oh that will hurt my image so it's kind of like mm, you're a bitch even though you're about 12 but it was a decent enough story it was quite easy to read obviously because it i think it's middle grade or maybe very very low ya i can't remember how old they are but it was it was a decent enough story average like most things i read you know we're out here reading average books unfortunately but i really love stuart as a character i think he was really lovely Next up, I read Sugar Rush by Julie Birchill. This one I found in a charity shop. I looked at it and I thought, hang about, there's a TV show called Sugar Rush. And then I looked at it and then, yes, this is the book based on that show. The show, oh my God, I feel old. It came out like about a thousand years ago. No, probably like 15 years ago, right? I think it did, I think it came out in 2005, which, as if, and also the TV show, from what I remember, because it's been a long ass time since I watched it, but the TV show I do believe was a lot better than the book. It's basically about Kim and her infatuation with her new friend Sugar. She's in love with her. Sugar's not a good person, neither is Kim. Nobody in this book is a good person. And it's just basically about her crushing on her friend. As you can tell by the fact that the TV show came out 15 years ago, this book has some language in it that we're not fans of. And it's just a little bit like, hmm. You know, I'm a big fan of dislikable characters, unlikable characters. I'm a big fan of unlikable characters. Which way, dislikable, unlikable? It's the same if they have something about them. But in this, it's just like, I don't like anybody. I read in this book. I don't know why she's infatuated with sugar because there's nothing about sugar that's good or that would make you fancier other than the fact that she's pretty and yeah i mean it was a short read the tv show does sway a little bit and different and there's certain characters in here that are different in the tv show probably for the better but i mean one plus of this it did make me feel like i want to rewatch it and it is on 4od so who knows it's not like i haven't got a thousand other things that i've not seen to watch yet why not rewatch something from ages ago Sugar Rush. Next up, I read Dress Codes for Small Towns by Courtney Stevens. This is my other four star read of the month. This is, when going into this, I had no idea what it was about other than like friends, but there's this group of friends, the Hexagon. You can guess how many friends there are in that. And it's just about friendship and sexuality and gender expression. And also they're from this small rural town in America. So they have these traditions. One of them is the dolly. One of them is a corn dolly. It's basically a dolly made out of the rind of a piece of corn. And I didn't know anything about that going in. So that was a kind of a, a nice little twist. I didn't know about all this corn dolly thing. And I'm trying to save the corn dolly thing. So it still goes on each year. And I very much enjoyed it. I really loved the fact that it wasn't, like, 99% of authors, if they wrote this book, there would be a love triangle and everyone would fall out and everyone would be like, mm, you know how it is. But in here, it was just so refreshing because they're like, mm, I kind of fancy that person. Oh, I kind of fancy that person. Let's just kiss and see if we like each other and if we don't. And if we don't, it's not a big deal, but we're still friends. And I feel like that is a lot more realistic to real life than a love triangle so intense. Everybody's in love. One of them doesn't get the, the girl or the boy and then pew, craziness ensues for no reason. So I very much enjoyed that aspect of it. It just felt like a proper friend group. Just enjoying each other and loving each other, 
platonically and unplatonically. And it was a good time. Next up, I read Elysium by Nora Sakovic. This one I was really scared to get to because it's the same author of the All for the Game series, which is my fave. So I was like, ah. Oh. And this book, like everything else here, was like a 3, 3.5. I think this one might have been one of the 3.5s because I did enjoy the story. It's extremely different from all to the it's extremely different from All for the Game, which is a good thing. It means the author's not putting herself in a box. This is urban fantasy where werewolves and vampires and weird creatures and ghouls exist. The main character, Evelyn, is human and she runs this house that all the, the weird creatures can go into. She's also can... Is it psychic? I don't know if it's psychic, but she can see the dead, basically. And one of her best buds is a ghost. And she's the only one that can see her. But basically loads of stuff ensues and that's the main problem i had with this book it's less than 200 pages and so much stuff happens loads of stuff ensues and then she's with this guy character and they're trying to figure out stuff and they're trying to there's like a battle between these two different elements of of power there's these dreams and nightmares that have to go together and they're, they're two different people and they have loads of power and together and then there's the guardians who are also have loads of power but they want to keep grip on everything and as you can tell it's extremely hard to explain but also when you're reading it because it's less than 200 pages and so much background and backstory and all these different characters and you've never heard of a nightmare and a dream so you need that all explaining so much of this book is told to you rather than seeing it yourself so much of it is just characters telling Evelyn the backstory and what's happening now and what's gonna happen in the future and that bit is why I didn't give this a something higher I feel like if this was either a longer book or if it was a series and the only the little the front bit was what was in this bit and then the next book was the next bit I think I would have really enjoyed it because Nora's really good at writing characters and I did very much enjoy the characters. There just wasn't enough time to get to know them. There wasn't enough time to get to know the world. There wasn't enough time to be invested in what's happening. And that was the unfortunate thing. It's still worth a read. It's very different to All for the Game, like I said. But unfortunately, it just fell flat for me because too much information shoved into a very small book. You just feel like Evelyn. You sat there like, what? too much. Next up I read Not Your Psychic by C.B. Lee and this one I feel like I'm gonna ruffle some feathers because so many people love this book and I was so annoyed. In fact before we even get into this here's a message from one of our sponsors it will chill you out it will chill me out and then we'll come back and we'll talk about this. Little guy's thirsty for the sub so you have to do it for him. So not your sidekick, eh? I really, really, really wanted to love this book because I've heard so many good things and it's such a cool premise. But the fact that everything was so obvious pissed me the fuck off. So the good bit, the last quarter of this book I really enjoyed and I definitely want to carry on with the series. I feel like the next book is going to be better than this one because hopefully it would have moved away from all this pretend mystery even though everything was fucking obvious and there was no mystery about it and it's just really irritating so i do definitely want to carry on with the series what was what was wrong with this there potentially might be spoilers in here but i'm going to try and keep it very 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 vague so our main character jess so our main character jess she is the daughter of these two superheroes and then loads of stuff happened in different ways and every single one was extremely obvious and she was the most naive, just gullible, stupid person ever in the first half of this book. Straight away, her and her friends watch this video of the news. There's a new superhero about a thousand percent. I knew who it was instantly. But that one I wasn't too mad about because it's kind of they never talked about it again and then later on you found out who it was. So I didn't I didn't care that Jess didn't realise who it was because I'm like, yeah, I realise, but we'll let her have it. What I will not let her have is the fact that she went to work in this place with two people, and these two people were never in the same room, and 
it didn't cross her mind that they were the same person. And to the point, there was literally a part in this book where, so one of the people has a robot called Jax with an S and they even explained it like, oh yeah, Jax with an S, I, I put an S on the end of everything. The other person that she works with, who is dressed in a mecha suit, that's why she doesn't know who it is, there's this part in the story where they also have a robot and it's called Jills. And literally, in Jess's mind, she's like, oh, Jills, that's really weird, it's got an S at the end. It reminds me almost like, and then the story says, but she doesn't finish her thought because other stuff's happened. And I'm like, that is not how thoughts work. You don't think in sentences. All of that information would have been like, boom, instantly. That's not how, that's not how brains work. And then, slightly later when she finds out they're the same person, she has the goal to be shocked about it, even though she was literally this close to thinking, hmm, that robot's exactly the same as that other person's robot. How can she be shocked when she already knew just because her thought was cut off because other things were happening? Oh my God, it annoyed me so much. It was just like so obvious. And I don't know if us as a as the viewer were meant to be like, ha, Jess, you fucking idiot. Or if we were meant to be like, oh, I don't realize either, even though it's really obvious. I don't know what the author was trying to do. Either way, it pissed me off. And then because of that, because I was already annoyed, little things that probably wouldn't have annoyed me if I was reading this book and not already annoyed, annoyed me. There's one point where she's on a two hour shift at work, two whole hours, and she's done loads of filing, which would have took ages because filing, you get into it, you, you, where's the time gone? You've, you've been filing for ages. Then she asks for a break, bearing in mind we're on a two hour shift, who has a break on a two hour shift, goes to see this other person, they're never there because she's talked to the other one and it takes them a while to get there because it's so obvious they're the same person. Had a little chat with them, comes back and then the, the robotic person, she doesn't see for another half an hour. I'm like, how does time work in this place? I know you've got superpowers, but is time different as well? Because two hours. And that would normally not bug me probably, maybe a little bit, but because I was already annoyed reading this. And like halfway through I was like, okay, we get it. They're the same person. And also this person is, obviously the daughter of these other super villains if that's who i've already told you at the beginning there's going to be spoilers so get the fuck over it she's so obviously the daughter of these super villains and that is made out to be a shock as well but we'll just move past that it's just like halfway through i was like hmm, right okay we get it please please don't make this the whole story and then i still had to wait like another loads of the book before she found out who she was and then she was all like, oh no way, I didn't expect that, even though it was really obvious. So, yeah, piss me off. All of those sort of pretend mysteries really annoyed me. But once we got to the end of the book, I was really enjoying it. I really liked the whole, uh, the government being corrupt thing. We all love a corrupt government. That's why we all live in this day and age. We love it so much, we put them in power, all of us. Haha, <laughs> fun times. But... Yeah, I enjoyed it when we got to that because I felt like the mysteries were more mysterious. Like, hmm, why are they doing that? Why is this happening? Why is that happening? What's this secret place? Hmm. So I do feel like the next book is going to be better because everything's out in the open. Everyone knows who everyone is. So there's not going to be any pretend mystery where everything's fucking obvious. It's probably going to be a really good time in the second book. So definitely want to carry on the series. But this, I'm sorry for everyone that loves this book. Pissed me off. As you can probably tell. Next up, I read Bingo Love. This is a very small comic about two women who fall in love in the 50s, 60s, in the past, and then they go away from each other and then meet again when they're older, in their 50s or 60s, rather than in the 50s or 60s. So, it's a, it's a, it's a nice read. It's, you know, it does what it says on the tin. But, first of all, it's too short, even for, a normal comic this is extremely short so a lot of information was shoved into one spot and they didn't really stay in each age category long enough to care about the characters or to learn enough about the characters at that age also there's a point in here where a main a main plot point there's a little sort of artist note at the bottom like hey if you want to actually know this main plot point of this book that you've already bought Get this other one that's totally different and you have to get it. You I don't know if you would have had to buy it. I say would have because uh, Google it. It doesn't even exist. Turns out they never made it. Why would you put something 
in your comic or read this other one, Bingo Love, that other bit, if you don't know that it's going to exist yet, you don't know if you've got enough money or enough time or enough whatever to actually create that, why would you put it in here to say that it exists when it doesn't even? And then it never did. So that annoyed me because I'm like, if you're going to buy something, you want the whole story in here. You don't want to have to get extra content. Extra content is meant to be a bonus extra bit of content. For example, there's another little artist note saying, oh, if you want to know what happened on this holiday, there's a separate thing for that. That's fine. It's not a main part of the story. It's a little extra. You're like, oh, they went on holiday then. If I want to find out what happened there, I can get this little novella, this little extra. But when it's literally a main part of the story and they're just trying to keep it storm and make you get something else from it, no, that's not it. That is not it. Don't do that. Put the story in the story. Extras are meant to be extra, not necessity, and then not even exist. But from, beside from all that, this reads too young, too woke. So these characters are meant to be in their 60s and 70s, and you got, they just, they talk like millennials and Gen Zs, and that is very unfortunate because I feel like if it wasn't such an inauthentic voice, I would have enjoyed it more. But it was so inauthentic, it so was not how an older lady would have talked. It's just, it takes you out of the story. Like at one point this woman says, take several seats and sit down. Is that something that a 60 year old would say? 60s, 70s, can't remember how old. Is that something an older lady would say? Potentially, very few of them that have talked to their grandkids would say take several seats but i feel like it's just not something that's authentic to a woman in her 60s or 70s or whatever that being said the last page did literally make me cry so silver linings and last but definitely not least is the house of impossible abuses by joseph cassara this took me quite a while to read it took me over a week to read it was I was slumpy reading, I was also not reading great things, very average, and then it made me take ages to read as well. It was everything piled up on top of each other that made this a very meh month. But we got there, we finished it. And again, it was all right, it was an average read. This, what I expected from this was more of the ballroom scene, more of the drag scene, more of the actual houses and all that business but it was very much just like a, a character study of these several different characters you see them at several stages of time in the early 80s in the in the mid 80s in the early 90s and it's just kind of them just doing stuff just average stuff sitting at the house doing sexual things for money wanting to buy something but they don't have much money it's just very much just their life going through I I think there was only one actual competition, drag competition in here, quite towards the end that one of them was in. So that shows you how much it wasn't about ballroom and drag scene, even though it was because obviously the characters were into drag. Also, several of them were trans women. Some of them just liked doing drag because they liked doing drag and they were just gay men. So that was a nice little differentiation but talking about differentiation it took quite a while at the beginning to, for me to remember who each character was because it would say their name at the top and then it would they would do whatever their life and then it would say somebody else but all of them had very similar voices and very similar backgrounds and very similar family life as younglings and it was just they all kind of blended together and everyone I was like I had to flick back every time a new person was like which one was that again what did they do so it took a while for me to place all of them individually and yeah there's not really an ending it's just kind of talks about their life and then stuff happens and then obviously i mean you can guess it's the 80s aids happens so there's a lot of um a lot of upset and a lot of characters getting aids and would you shut up i'm trying to talk about aids here and you're meowing yeah if you can hear meowing it's this so yeah, it was just quite a slog to get through because I was already in a bit of a slump and nothing was really happening. It was just talking about life, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I do really like character-driven stories. I would prefer a character-driven rather than a plot-driven. But with this, it was just very samey and nothing really happened apart from getting diseases, some of the characters. 
there we go. Also, towards the end, there's something happens and then it flicks forward several years and some of the characters have left one of the other ones because they all live in the same house and then it never tells you why. They just left in the middle of the night and didn't tell this person and then it's never explained why. And I feel like that's a big plot point because the whole of the rest of the book they were all in this house together and I'm like, but at least tell us why, please. But it didn't, so you just have to guess. So yeah, it was all right. Like most of the other things I read. So there we go, that's what I read in June. A lot of average reads, unfortunately. Hopefully July will be better. Let me know down below what you read, if you've read any of these, what were your thoughts on it. If you want to read them, I normally say, but I didn't really um, give many of them glowing reviews. But hey, let me know down below. If this is your first video by me and you enjoy it, then please check out some of the others. And if you continue to enjoy, then please subscribe, that'd be awesome. Anyway guys, I'll see you in a few days with another video. Bye.